Oh boy, we've got a ton of topics to cover today, including new games enhanced for the Series X, updates, and more. Let's get into it. What is happening, guys? Dealer back again with yet another video talking about a ton of different topics today regarding next generation games. We got some updates on a lot of different things here. Hey, if you happen to like the video, maybe hit the like button. Show a buddy to subscribe. There are over a million of you that check out the channel every single month. And of that, only nearly a hundred thousand subscribers. So if you haven't, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. And by the way, I want to give a big shout out to Tony Stark RDX, uh, the, one of the moderators, the bosses of my Discord. If you are channel member or a patron you know this he wanted me to show you this artwork real quick so again check him out i'll link that down below and uh let's get into the topics oh man let's start with something a little light-hearted let some people file into this video it makes no sense hey playstation are launching a baseball game on xbox yes sony have officially commented on this title's release day and date with not only ps4 ps5 but the xbox platform as well yes that's right a sony studio is releasing a first party baseball game on xbox finally and yes xbox fans have been waiting for this as far as i know microsoft just didn't find it viable to actually release a baseball game like this before and sony apparently have hit the same conclusion thus going to multiple platforms let me know what you think of mlb the show arriving on your xbox april 20th hey real quick xbox game pass almost 20 million subscribers on xbox game pass right now that is insane only a few years after launch there is no one even close right now i think game pass is a phenomenal pro consumer family friendly service uh and of course you know what it's good for the gamer if they decide to rent their games that way you can still always buy them let me know if you have game pass down below a developer showing off a series x title apparently leaks an xbox event and i wanted to cover this last week when it came out but you know what i just couldn't get to it right memory developer seemingly leaks an xbox event on twitter he does this while showing off some new screenshots he says hello everyone i will We'll post a short trailer of a bright memory infinite's villains trailer here's a screenshot of the redesigned villain of course more gameplay will be available on this year's game show so i haven't really checked out what anyone else is really saying about this right now uh but according to what this looks like i would say that um yeah there's definitely some kind of game show now the question is duh there's a game show but why would he show this so soon why not wait until may june i don't know these events are usually around june or july so again why show it so soon would there be an event even sooner than expected let me know your thoughts on that down below and of course if i hear anything i'll be sure to update you in a future video hey this next one i gotta give a shout out to the ash and luca luca teal uh she basically this this video killed me she she did a stream basically crushing a lot of these guys uh, in a certain community um that you know just loved it they play, play twitter not games basically long story short an indie developer was talking about series x and how everything would be easier to develop if uh it was on one platform not two because there is time Time consumed when making games for the Series X as well. You do have to optimize, meaning the adjustment, the modification of settings, assets, etc., to make a game more performant on that box. This is how it's always worked. Yes, technically, one box is easier than two. But the developer in the article crushes everybody who tried to run <laughs> and spin this article into something negative for Series X, something negative for Microsoft, and you've just got to call a spade a spade. That's why Lucas stream was hilarious. Pointing out over and over, nothing about this is negative. Absolutely nothing about this is negative. Of course, people who don't know how to read in this community, I'm just gonna make that assumption that people don't know how to read, right? Yes, nothing about this is negative. Of course, people in this community don't know how to read. Why? Why, people? Come on, you don't have to set yourself up for this. The developer actually says he thinks it is a very smart solution, one that is easily scalable and future-proof for next-generation games, thanks to its CPU solution. Yes, that is due to game design. Now, yes, is it more work scaling an Xbox Series X version of a game down to the Series S? Yes, it is. Yes, ultimately, the developer is right. It would be easier with just one box, but at the end of the day, would they they rather sell several million more copies of a game potentially well he seems to say that it is a smart solution to getting more boxes out there while remaining future proof as to those talking about memory constraints you are not factoring in velocity architecture one bit you're not factoring in mesh shaders one bit you're not factoring in the targeted lower resolution of anywhere from 1080p to 1440p like I've always said, it's going to be a 1080p box, and it pretty much is. You're not factoring in these things. You're not factoring in the resource savings given by DX12 Ultimate or the lower frame buffer size, basically saving on RAM there too. 
mainly because a lot of these guys have no idea what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, Microsoft have accounted for these things. And yes, we will have developers complaining. Yes, we will have things that are happening with the box where people have to learn the architecture. Yes, I get that. You should get that too. Let's keep that in mind. Ultimately, Series S is a capable little machine, especially at 1080p and of course at 299 with an SSD RT technology inside with none of these features really being used right now because RDNA 2 features are not even being used on the PC right now. Well, I'd say there's a lot more left in the tank, not to mention 16 threads of Zen 2. Most games are using 8 right now, by the way. Again, the developer says it should be really easy to scale games down to 1080p on Series S and that it is a a smart solution, though it would be easier if there was only a Series X. And out of that, people got Series S is holding everything back, die. Yeah, that's really, really odd to me. Again, let me know your thoughts about that down below. Hey, fans of Control, all 16 of you watching this video, they have announced specifics regarding the Xbox Series X and Series S version of the game. Yes, the update is coming sooner than you might think. The Remedy developed Supernatural sci-fi game will actually feature a pretty drastic leap to frame rate and visual fidelity on the next generation of consoles. Remember, these are just games that are being backwards compatibly upgraded, if that makes sense. Almost none of them are using any of the RDNA 2 features that Xbox Series S and X have, let alone the box-specific features like velocity architecture. There's a lot left in the box, even after all of this. So, performance mode is going to target 60 FPS at 1440p on the Xbox Series X. The graphics mode is actually going to be 30 FPS performance, but with ray tracing. Again, I think developers should really offer everything on modes, ultra modes at 60 FPS at whatever resolution that has to be at, uh, 1080p even, I don't care. That's just my opinion, and of course, you know, hey, you don't gotta play there if you don't like it, that's the thing. They do say, note, the performance mode available on the Xbox Series S is actually targeting 900p, and that's with no ray tracing at 60 FPS. Yes, that's, uh, that's the case, keep in mind, and control is very, very demanding as well. The engine, Remedy games, they always have been. But you know what? I'm just glad that they are offering performance modes on a game like this. Yes, Remedy, they have never really optimized their games the best, as I've mentioned, and the fact that they are still doing 60 FPS, even on a Series S, a $299 console, is uh, absolutely awesome for the consumer, those who actually crave a decent frame rate, and those that want to play control at a much better quality and fidelity when it comes to what you're seeing on screen. Frame rate is the number one thing, as I've always said. Give me 60 FPS, then turn up as many settings as you can, and then scale up resolution with what's left. And you know what? I guess it really depends on what the studio's goals are. Ultimately, they, uh, well, hey, they're not giving you a free upgrade. That's really on you to decide if you want to pick it up or not. But they are enhancing the title, giving it a frame rate mode, giving it ray tracing as well, and they've taken their time to do so. Let me know if you'll be picking up Control Ultimate Edition down below, or if you'll wait for the inevitable sale or Game Pass inclusion. But hey, seriously guys, thank you for rocking out with me. You guys are amazing. Hit the like button if you haven't. Maybe subscribe, tell a buddy or two. And again, check out the links down below for the sources to these articles and sources. Yes, check out the link down below for the sources to the sources, right? I try to include as much information as possible in these things. They take forever to make, uh, but I try to make them worth watching. And again, seeing you guys in the comments, uh, get your opinions off and, and talking to some of you guys, it, it's absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't followed me already on Twitter, that's where you can keep up with me the most. That's definitely uh, going to be most ideal. Deal. That's at dealer underscore gaming. And of course, Xbox Live at II space dealer space II. Thank you to those who made it to this point and to those that are deciding to support the channel in other ways. And shout out to Tony Stark RDX as well. Again, check him out, uh, follow him. And of course, you know, tell him dealer says hi, even though I'm sure he's watching this. Shout out to Liesel Papa as well. Uh, fantastic moderator of RDX podcast. Uh, we got people like Nano Polymath been talking to behind the scenes. Assassin Lupa. She's, uh, she's you know, awesome. So uh, there's so many people in this community. I'm going to start doing more shout outs and doing more stuff, especially from the patron stuff. So again, thank you guys for what you do. I'm Dealer. I'll see you in the next one. Scaling graphically effects, oh, graph, graphical effects is a lot easier than scaling gameplay. <sighs> the amount of available memory is a determining factor in a lot of cases when we talk about the size of game. Blah, 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 blah. The, size, <laughs> the size of memory that is available in the Xbox Series S is the actual determining point for the entire console generation as gameplay features have been fitted to the lowest spec. From that point of view, as a developer, it would be much easier if there was a single Xbox Series X SKU. But given the circumstances, I think that Microsoft has made a good choice in how to create a much cheaper console that can still run next generation games.
nothing about this is negative absolutely nothing about this is negative two things can exist at the same time right i don't care about ray tracing let me in this so yeah two things can exist at the same time right and then of course people who don't know how to read in this community i'm just gonna make that assumption that people don't know how to read right <laughs> 